INFJs have always felt at ease by themselves. In their own company, they experience true pleasure, happiness, and calm. However, odd things might happen when they eventually meet the person they believe they will be with for the rest of their lives. This will occur when a true INFJ meets their match. Number 10. Eventually have a sympathetic ear to listen to them. It is a strange occurrence for the INFJ to finally meet someone who can relate to them. Anyone may hardly relate to the most complex personality types, feelings, and thoughts. So being understood might be regarded as a once-in-a-lifetime experience. INFJs require a spouse who will make an effort to see things from their point of view rather than passing judgment right away. Any personality type that has the ability to empathize can be that person. They don't have to be another INFJ. INFJs find it annoying to be around people who pass judgment without first knowing the circumstance or putting themselves in the other person's shoes. Rarely do persons who are hurriedly and needlessly critical enter into close, lasting relationships with INFJs. Number 9. They start talking more. Another weird occurrence occurs when INFJs eventually meet their special someone. They start to converse more than ever. When INFJs are in happy, healthy relationships, they can be remarkably talkative, pleasant, and gregarious. They may have felt the need to suppress a major portion of their thoughts throughout their lives, understanding how the majority of people would interpret them. They are accustomed to the thought that those around them don't perceive the world in the same way as they do. Therefore, they train themselves to maintain their ludicrous viewpoints and handle their curious queries independently. They think that being in a committed relationship will allow them to be more honest about their feelings, perceptions, and thoughts. They require a partner that shares their actual entrance with them dot and would return their hospitality. They seek a confidante with whom they can openly express their emotions and discuss their strengths and faults. First, the INFJ has always found passive aggression and secrecy to be huge turnoffs. Does this suggest that they trust their partner more than any other human because they are talkative? Number 8. They grow more at ease with being their true selves. Don't misunderstand this INFJs have always felt at ease being their true unadulterated selves. Regardless of how the world saw them, they have always accepted and loved themselves. Despite how society views them, they have always remained true to who they are. Strangely, though, kids seem to become more engrossed in these experiences. Because they have finally found someone who loves and accepts them for their complexity, intricateness, and uniqueness, they may have never experienced this from anyone. And when someone finally does, it almost feels strange. It's awe-inspiring to consider the possibility of eventually piquing someone's interest in their entire inner life. It may explain why INFJs remain committed to their relationships despite how difficult circumstances may be. If INFJs cast secret ballots in a relationship, they would place the highest value on authenticity. Additionally, due to their dominating introverted intuition, they are adept at reading people's intentions and motivations. Therefore, a lack of authenticity will be a huge turnoff for them. This means that there shouldn't be any phony compliments, deceptive speech, or game playing. Number 7. They'll expose their frail sides. Given how much they value themselves, it is odd that INFPs display their vulnerable sides. They are attempting to conceal themselves from the harsh society around them. The problem is that INFJs don't commonly put their faith in others because, throughout their lives, they have frequently experienced disappointment, betrayal, and frustration in social situations. But once they find the proper person, they won't be reluctant to reveal a substantial portion of who they are. They have always been guarding against outsiders. They start to become less reserved and more emotional than rational. They reveal their most vulnerable self to someone when they feel at ease with them. But as an INFJ, have you ever put your trust in the wrong person and ended yourself getting scammed? Number 6. All of a sudden, they want to hang out. 
Anyone familiar with the INFJ personality type would be aware that they hardly ever hang out with their buddies. They would rather avoid the exhausting and time-consuming social engagements of the day by staying home to read a book, write in their journal, or prepare their favorite food. Nonetheless, when they locate the ideal one, an odd occurrence will take place, such as a sudden change in preference. The INFJ is suddenly eager to spend time with that individual, along with that person's family and social circles. Despite this, they continue to be very picky about how they invest their time and energy with these people. Number five, they reply to texts right away. A buddy of an INFJ can attest to how long it takes them to reply to a call, text, or email. Either they are carefully considering what they're about to say, or they simply don't care to answer right then and there in order to prioritize their inner calm. However, if they find the right one, they won't mind using their phones the majority of the time, awaiting their upcoming responses. It's because they don't want their special someone to believe that they are ignoring or disregarding their communications. They only act in this manner when they are ecstatic to speak with someone, particularly if they feel cared for and understood. Do you, as an INFJ, relish communicating with someone special these days? Number four, they can at last see someone as a go-to person other than their inner self. INFJs have traditionally viewed themselves as their sole source of support during difficult times. However, when they fall in love, they gradually reveal their highs and lows to that person, without any hesitation. And this is among the oddest things that may possibly occur to them. They are accustomed to having their secure zones, so they rarely turn to anyone for support and assistance. They are so accustomed to being extremely independent and self-sufficient that they are unable to imagine what it would be like to rely on others in times of need. However, this mental conditioning can be altered by finding the one. Making their significant other their safe haven and go-to person is how they first demonstrate their love for them. They'll enjoy venting their displeasure and disappointment with them. Because they have faith in them and think they can comprehend them. Number three, they will consider someone else's priorities to be a regular part of their day. INFJs don't often mix or combine other people's priorities, hobbies, or preferences into their daily routine. Being able to accomplish it at last is an odd experience. INFJs naturally like their alone time. That is the only way to restore their mental stamina and give them the motivation to once more face the outside world. Being busy doesn't matter to them once they've found the perfect person, so they make time to talk to him or her. They will incorporate their loved one's emotional needs into their daily routine, regardless of what they are doing at the time. Have you, as an INFJ, put someone else's needs before your own? Number two, there will be a common desire for individual development. What's so unusual about having someone who values self-improvement like an INFJ does? It's because they have never had a situation like this with another person before. The INFJ has a different definition of personal growth than other individuals do. They define it as an attempt to go above their present capabilities and become their best selves. They define it as an effort to acquire a universal method of understanding things in order to see beyond the limitations of their human logic. And because they are always trying to better themselves, anything that encourages development and self-awareness appeals to them. Because they constantly strive for a greater level of self-knowledge and potential, they are rarely satisfied to remain as they are. Thus, the INFJ board can unavoidably be made by a spouse who is content to be passive, complacent, and static. But finding someone who also values personal development makes them scale heights and aim for the stars. Number one, they can now feel understood at last. However, what's so odd about finally meeting someone who concurs with their logic? For the INFJ, getting to experience this on a regular basis is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because they hardly ever do. INFJs have a strong urge to delve into the depths of life and are analytical thinkers with a big-picture curiosity. 
They wish to discuss theories, ideologies, and unspoken truths, are on occasion questioned inanely. It is therefore not surprising that most people misinterpret them. Finding a companion who can understand their intricacy and their diversity of ideas is an unusual experience for them. They still have some hope and love left in them, despite everything. Simply put, they have spent the most of their lives dealing with people's superficiality. That meeting with the right person seemed almost unattainable. Therefore, they won't be content with superficial chats until they meet someone who can relate to them. Have you discovered someone who can understand your logic as an INFJ? INFJs learn to be more independent over time because they operate on a different frequency. They have no trouble handling their emotional baggage or overcoming obstacles. However, meeting someone special can in fact positively impact their inner universe. Have you ever encountered an INFJ? How are they unique from the majority of people you encounter?